Chris Cuomo was on Bill Mayer's show. They got talking about AOC, about socialism, about Bernie, about the elections. Let's take a look at what they said. So the two, three-fourths of the squad came out for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yes. What? Yes. Yes, they did. I just okay. I laugh at that because I don't know how that squad thing actually happened. Like, I don't I don't know why we're calling a bunch of freshmen uh, some kind of entity of influence in a system they just got into. Because they do have a lot of influence. They have they, a lot of social they, media influence. Right, they well, have political cachet. The media loves to talk okay. about them. But I think you have to put points on the board if you're going to earn your office. Get things done for your constituents, not just for your own profile. Is, okay. My question was... Louis. I love you. <laughs> Imagine if that were his name. <laughs> that was so Italian of you. <laughs> I, know. I take no offense. No, you shouldn't. But is that uh, the squad coming out for Bernie? First thing I thought was, that's good for Elizabeth Warren. Because? Because it makes him to the left of her, and she needs to move to the middle. And what always happens, it's not unusual in politics, you know this, I'm sure all of you do also, is that primary takes you to a poll uh, a polar position within your party and then you try right. to fight your way back to the center. I think what's going on with the Democratic Party is a little bit more extreme uh, than we've seen in the past. We had a poll not too long ago that said if the person running against this president identifies as socialist or can be identified reasonably as socialist, right. they lose by six points. So I think labels matter in politics. They do. I think uh, the Senator Sanders has a tough time in defining socialist as a good thing to a capitalist society um, that doesn't like the idea of that kind of distri distribution of assets in general. Even in his own party, I don't think it really goes. I think they got a tough task. Chris Cuomo, thank you very much. You. Appreciate you flying out here. There are so many abominations in this clip, I have to go through them one by one. I mean, this guy, Cuomo, Fredo, <laughs> He's scared of the squad. Oh no, four women of color with, in positions of power? Oh, he doesn't like that. Yes, yes, these four women of color, freshman congresswomen, do have a lot of influence. I smell a little male fragility right there. I'm not gonna lie. I think I heard Nancy Pelosi say something similar to him, by the way. I mean, she actually went worse, right? She was like, oh, the progressive wing in the party? <laughs> That's like five people. But she also tried to denigrate and downplay the importance of how much uh, influence Rashida Tlaib, AOC, Ilhan Omar, Ayanna Presley have. She tried to downplay the importance of their influence. Why? Because it's on Twitter. I mean, <laughs> considering the president himself spends a lot of time on Twitter, I wouldn't say it's too irrelevant. Okay, let's put it that way. I mean, I don't know what century Chris Cuomo and Nancy Pelosi are living in, but yes, uh, social media plays a big part in today's world of politics and uh, Twitter most of all. And by the way, it's very funny because they want to tell you on the one hand, oh, social media influenced the elections. The Russians are coming on social media. But then she turns around and says, oh, social media is not important. Their Twitter followers don't mean anything. Which one is it? Which one is it? <laughs> you see the bull <laughs> This is unbelievable. So Fredo, <laughs> our friend, Chris Cuomo, Fredo, he doesn't like the squad. Okay, well, that's too bad for you, man, because it sucks. It sucks for you. And he also says like, oh, they haven't accomplished anything. Man, let me tell you something. Let me be straight with you, man. The fact that these women got elected to Congress without any corporate money is an accomplishment in itself. And you know that anyone with a brain cell can see that they have influence. That's why it's a great thing they endorse Bernie Sanders. I don't even know why we're debating this. This is an, a, a stupid point. And then what does he go on to say? The squad coming out for Bernie, first thing I thought was, that's good for Elizabeth Warren. Because? Because it makes him to the left of her, and she needs to move to the middle. I mean, these people are so disconnected from reality. <laughs> they will attack Bernie and smear him at any cost possible, even when he gets the most prized endorsement in the political system they will still find a way to rationalize it into being a bad thing for him. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, Jesus Christ himself could endorse Bernie Sanders and they would find a way to turn it around. Oh, but you know, not everyone's a Christian, so... <laughs> this is the logic of these fucking neoliberal rats. Okay, this is how they think. Any cost to smear progressives, man. I don't know what planet he's living on, but... I can bet you that Warren's campaign is hella pissed that they didn't get the endorsement from the squad. I can, I can assure you that. 
I can assure you that. I'm pretty sure that Warren thought she might get it, you know? I think her ego, I don't know, she strikes me as the kind of person who would be like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get it. Oh, yeah, you bet. I'm a woman, too, and I'll work with them a bit, so they're going to give it to me because Bernie's, nah, nah, I'm the one. I can assure you she thought she might get it. And now they're, they're trying to make it look like it's a plus for Warren. And she needs to move to the middle. She needs to move to the middle. Well, I mean, the way things are looking, I think she never moved from the middle. She's always been there. You know, Elizabeth Warren, as we said, I get tired of playing catch up with her flip flopping. You know, she can't make her mind up on Medicare. She can't make her mind up on taking corporate money. Anyone who is showing you that kind of instability is not to be taken seriously as a progressive. <laughs> okay, you don't have to worry about if Bernie Sanders takes corporate money or means what he says. You don't need to worry about that. I don't know what kind of logic he's saying here. Like, if, if the squad endorsed Warren, that means she would have looked too left. It was just last week. It was just last week that all these feminists, these white middle class feminists, were white splaining why the squad should endorse Warren. They were outraged that these women of color, who, yes, whether you like it or not, they actually have free will, they were endorsing Bernie Sanders and not. Elizabeth Warren, the, the darling of the wine moms from Orange County, okay? Yes, yes, they were outraged. <laughs> and what always happens, it's not unusual in politics, you know this, I'm sure all of you do also, is that primary takes you to a poll, uh, a polar position within your party, and then you try right. to fight your way back to the center. Ah, a grain of truth drops from the sky. You hear what he said right there? He admitted a truth in politics. He said that, the primary takes you to a polar position and then you pivot back to the center. What does that mean? What does that mean? It has become so common in politics to fucking lie in the primary about what you represent and then default back to you the regular bullshit once you got the nomination and you don't care about anything that he's just openly admitting it on the air. He's openly admitting it. And so their logic is that why should Warren pretend to be on the left to appease progressives in the primary? She should just stay in the center so that she doesn't look too much like a communist. That's their logic. She's gonna go back to showing her true colors in the, prim uh, in the general election anyway. So she doesn't need to lie in the primary. She should just show them. <laughs> I agree, I agree. And man, people who are paying attention, we can already see her true colors. We don't need to wait for the general to know that she's gonna, she's gonna flake on Medicare for all. We don't need to wait for that. She's already doing it. She already flaked on corporate money, man. I mean, her, her campaign is already contaminated with corporate money to begin with. The moment she started her presidential bid, there was corporate money injected into the campaign from her Senate bid. <laughs> so she can't say that she doesn't take her money. She already took it. <laughs> we had a poll not too long ago that said if the person running against this president identifies as socialist or can be identified reasonably as socialist, right. they lose by six points. So I think labels matter in politics. They do. I think uh, the Senator Sanders has a tough time in defining socialist as a good thing to a capitalist society um, that doesn't like the idea of that kind of distri distribution of assets in general. Even in his own party, I don't think it really goes. I think they got a tough task. Chris Cuomo, thank you very much. I appreciate you flying out here. First of all, he said that they did a poll and uh, most people wouldn't vote for a socialist. If it's Donald Trump versus a socialist, he said that the socialist candidate would lose. Now, I don't know what poll he's talking about. I really tried to Google it and I couldn't find it. But the last time I checked, about 40% of Americans favor the term socialist. Okay, that's something that they look for in a candidate. And let me just put this into context. This is a country that is still, <laughs> that is still obsessed with McCarthyism. Most people still don't understand the meaning of the word socialist. They still think it means communist. So... Honestly, 40%, that's a very good number given the circumstances, just to begin with. But I think that this is irrelevant. You know what he's trying to do here? He's trying to, he's trying to brainwash you into thinking that Bernie Sanders is unelectable. That's the point he's trying to make. He's trying to throw it out there. He's trying to plant a seed in your mind. He's unelectable. People won't go for a socialist. People don't give a crap about that label. They care about Bernie Sanders' policies. When people are asked, hey, do you want Medicare for all? Guess what? 70% of them say, hell yeah. <laughs> when people are asked if they want a $15 minimum wage because there hasn't been a raise increase in 40 years, they say, hell yeah. <laughs> so this, this whole bogus that you need to run a centrist 
like Elizabeth Warren or Amy Klobuchar because people are so scared of the word socialist. It's a bunch of bogus. I'm sorry, man, but if people were scared of that term, there wouldn't be 26,000 people turning up for a rally in Queens for Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders wouldn't have won multiple states during the last primary. Bernie Sanders wouldn't have had to be cheated out of the nomination if people were so scared of the word socialist. Okay? Bernie Sanders wouldn't be the candidate with the most cash in this primary if they were scared of the term socialist. Bernie Sanders has over a million individual donors and a million volunteers working on his campaign. So don't give me this bogus. He's not going to tell you that, though, because if he puts it into context that, oh, this guy actually has a bunch of money, a bunch of support, a bunch of grassroots movements, everyone is coming out to see him, everyone is supporting his movement in a second bid. They've still been there four or five years now. People are going to be like, oh, man, you're talking shit. <laughs> you're full of it. So he can't tell you that. He has to do the whole, uh, you know, uh, McCarthyism bit, the red scare, the fear mongering. Oh, the word socialist. Remember that? Socialist. <laughs> So, you know, he's cherry picking the information that he wants to show you here. He's cherry picking the information. Police, fire, roads, Medicare, Social Security. These are all socialist programs, whether you like it or not. You know, and it reminds me, by the way, of when uh, Jordan from Status Quo, he was interviewing some old guy at a Trump rally. I don't know where it was. And and he was, you know, this old dude was like bashing socialism. And he asked him, like, are you on Social Security? And he says, yes. And, it, and he tells him, like, you know, that's a socialist program, right? Uh, uh, but, but that's besides the point. <laughs> no, the Democrats just want socialism. That's not American. Okay. So they, what, want, they, want, they want free everything. That's you, not American. Are you in on America, Social Security? In, in, in America, are you on Social Security? I am, but I work, but I work a full-time business. I know, but you're aware social, uh, social Security is a socialist program. Well, that's beside the point. That was, you that just said you don't want socialism. That's fine. Oh, man, what a joke. Bill Mayer and Fredo are a bunch of jagoffs, okay? Actually, that's an insult to jagoffs like Jimmy Dore and myself. So <laughs> they're a bunch of idiots, and they, they, no one should listen to them. I mean, I'm, I apologize for covering Bill Mayer. I'm sorry that we had to do this. I didn't want to subject you to this, but... God, what a bunch of clowns. Seriously, what a bunch of clowns. The Senator Sanders has a tough time in defining socialist as a good thing to a capitalist society um, that doesn't like the idea of that kind of distrib distribution of assets in general. Oh, they don't like the distribution of assets. Yeah, man, I'm sure working class people are, are so distraught about taking 2% wealth tax from the rich. Oh my God, you'll break their heart. Don't do it. Please, for the love of God, don't do it. Get the hell out of here with that bullshit, man. What a joke. What a goddamn joke. You know what he's doing? Again, he's doing the whole communism scare. They're going to take away the private businesses. No, they're not. And he, that's what he's trying to do. That's what he's trying to do. And he's right, though, about one thing. They don't like it within his own party. That's true. You know why? Because his own party is run by the same goddamn people who are going to be affected by Bernie's changes. The DNC is run by oligarchs. The DNC is run by corporatists. It is owned by corporations. So, of course, they don't like what he's saying. You dingus. 